Hotep. Hotep means peace in the ancient Kemetic language, and Awalimu means teacher in Kiswahili and is equivalent to the English word professor. My name is Mwalimu Melody Mashiri Van Putten, and this is Mwalimu Dropping the Knowledge. Picking up where we left off in part one, today is part two on the topic of aesthetics. What is beautiful? For a brief review, it is important to note that all people have an aesthetic sensibility defining and answering the question, what is beautiful, from their own cultural and historical context. Beauty is subjective and an objective topic. However, like virtually all aspects of African and African-American diaspora, history, and culture since brutally disrupted by European conquests, and the imposition of white supremacy, the issue of aesthetics continues to be problematic for us. We have been negatively impacted by images and imagery that do not reflect our beauty, but in many ways plants the seed of self-hatred. The imposition of European beauty standards as the standard of beauty to which everyone else must be measured has been and still is insidious and reveals itself in ways that has us despising how God made us. To reiterate, our deep understanding of this situation is a critical connection we must make in order to change our thinking and our behavior. One of our most influential scholars wrote on the impact of miseducation. His insights are as relevant to us today as they were in the 1920s and 30s. Dr. Carter G. Woodson was a historian, author, scholar, founder of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, and father of black history, having created the celebration observed in February in 1926. His 1933 book, The Miseducation of the Negro, not only explains why we are gripped in circumstances, but also how to get out of it. Woodson begins by plainly expressing his intention to provide a detailed explanation of the mistakes in the education of the Negro. It is offered as an extensive corrective that defines and delineates the history, and most importantly, the process and purpose of miseducation. Accordingly, historical understanding is multi-layered and considers the role that the various components to living life play in our ultimate quest for liberation. Woodson deeply understood this, especially its psychological component. In the preface, he wrote, no systematic effort toward change has been possible for taught the same economics, history, philosophy, literature, and religion, which have established the present code of morals. The Negro's mind has been brought under the control of the oppressor. When you control a man's thinking, you do not have to control his actions. The problem of holding the Negro down, therefore, is easily solved. Woodson expands on this in the first chapter of the book. The seat of the trouble describes in minute detail the process of self-alienation as a result of the lack of self-knowledge. As it relates to aesthetics, Self-alienation shows up as a disdain for the God-created skin tones, hair textures, facial features, and our body shapes. Woodson links the seed of self-hatred by connecting education with self-perception. As an insightful scholar, Woodson understands the purposeful planted seeds of self-hatred and the resulting impact on the psyche of black people. He wrote, to handicap a student by teaching him that his black face is a curse 
and that his struggle to change his condition is hopeless is the worst sort of lynching. It kills one's aspirations and dooms him to vagabondage and crime." End quote. This type of miseducation has long lasting effects on how one sees oneself and the world. Tragically, the examples abound. In 2015, journalist Melissa Harris Perry reported on a majority black charter school in Oklahoma that enshrined the seeds of black self-hatred in policy in the school's parent student handbook. The mother of a seven-year-old girl was referred to the handbook when she was told that her daughter's braided hairstyle wasn't allowed at school. To quote the policy, hairstyles such as dreadlocks, afros, and other faddish styles are unacceptable. Ironically, ancient African hairstyles included afros, cornrows, intricate braiding, hair coughed and shaped into works of art. And yes, we created hair weaves and used them, but not because we didn't like the hair we were created with. The issue of black hair has been and continues to be an ongoing source of angst and anxiety for black women, or poetically stated, hair. Good, bad, nappy, straight hair. Does it matter? Why does hair have to be a woman's crown and glory? Good, bad, nappy, hate, straight hair, a billion dollar industry. Long, fake, human or artificial purchased hair. Why? What does it mean to see a hand caressing a long, weaved head lovingly? Bone straight, chemicalized hair, cooking the scalp and possibly the brain. Short, cropped, naturally nappy hair on top of a head with a brilliant mind inside. That's what I'm talking about. Hair liberation will free our minds and add dollars to our pocketbooks. Sisters, if you must straighten your hair, do not unbraid your mind. Even as you remember, in the rain, Africa reclaims her own. As for me, I'm happy to be nappy. Madam C.J. Walker, what say you? We'll be right back.